Some people can argue that there's no such thing as too much beer. Aren't those people called alcoholics? Well, yeah, but thanks for ruining the joke before it even got there, Pask. Unavoidable disasters happen. Mother Nature has a thing for showing us at any time what little bitches we really are by throwing a spinning cloud of bullshit our way, or attempting to kill us with fire, or inflicting a serious case of shaken baby syndrome. Sometimes the unavoidable disaster is man-made. We all fuck up from time to time, and occasionally the fuck up is so bad it ends in a million pounds of beer flooding the streets and eight people dead. But not from alcohol poisoning. I'm Vibby. And on this episode of A Space Alien Explains, the London Beer Flood. Welcome to the neighborhood of St. Giles, a poor area of London and the location of the Horseshoe Brewery, which was owned by Mew and Company. The Horseshoe Brewery was a major producer of porter, which is a type of dark beer native to the area. The brewery was in possession of the largest beer vat London had ever seen at the time. The biggest vat they had was not the one that broke. But the vat that did break held more than enough needed to cause absolute f***ing chaos. The vat in question was 22 feet tall and 60 feet wide, and could hold approximately 135 gallons of beer. 29 metal belts were wrapped around the vat to help maintain its shape, but in hindsight, maybe they should have gone with 30. On October 17, 1814, at around 5.30 p.m., one of the metal belts had broken off from the pressure building inside the vat due to fermentation. The remaining 28 belts just couldn't hold the damn thing together. The vat exploded, causing the other vats nearby to also collapse in the world's most alcoholic game of dominoes. Soon, a 15-foot tidal wave of beer was rushing into the streets of St. Giles. 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer. Take one down, pass it around, 15-foot tidal wave of beer through the wall. Meanwhile, a wake was being held in the home of Anne Saville, whose son had died the day before. Four others were gathered when the wave of beer swept through, collapsing the house and killing everyone inside. Mary Banfield and her four-year-old daughter were having tea outside when the beer tsunami swept them away. In all, eight people died, most of them women and children, since the accident occurred at a time of day when working men and boys would still be at their jobs. Now I know what you're probably thinking. There's 380,000 gallons of free beer in the street. Everyone started drinking it next, right? 380,000 gallons of beer on the wall. 380,000 gallons of beer. Take one down, pass it around. 379,999 gallons of beer on the wall. 379,999 gallons of beer on the wall. Actually, accounts vary on that. Some say that people totally did go nuts and bring out pots and pans and even used their hands to collect as much beer as they possibly could. Some even drank it right off the street. There are even rumors of a ninth death due to alcohol poisoning. But other accounts say that it was like any other disaster scene. Panic and despair, but caused by a wave of beer. What a f***ing world. Hang on though, it gets weirder. Mew and company was of course taken to court over the damages caused by the accident. They were obviously at fault for the disaster, since they should have been checking the vats and making sure they were properly maintained. People f***ing died. There had to be some kind of compensation required. The courts actually declared the accident as, and I'm not kidding, an act of God. Which means it was totally unavoidable, nothing could have helped it, and the company didn't have to pay anyone any form of compensation. Cause God did it! Praise be to the Lord Jesus, who gives us our daily bread and 15 feet of beer! This is what happens when your God's superpowers involve turning water into wine. The brewery was demolished in 1922, and the Dominion Theater now stands in its place. There is no memorial or plaque where the disaster occurred, but a local pub called the Holborn Whippet brews a special porter once a year on the anniversary of the flood. I don't know about you guys, but I'm definitely adding death by beer flood on the list of ways I want to die. Pask, is it bad that I keep a list like that? Yes. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for watching. Here's this week's featured fan art made by Lil Dead Zombs on Twitter. Link to the artist page is in the description. And here's some comments from the last video. 
If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more from this channel. Follow me on any of my social media, links are also in the description. If you've heard of an event you'd like to see me do a video on, I'm always open to suggestions, and I am curious to see what kind of things you want to see me cover. As always, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next week.